George explores the grain chain with support from farmers and millers across the UK. Hiya, I'm back in the supermarket getting more supplies for a cook-up later. I always check the information on packets and labels. They're not just pretty pictures, they're really important. Check it out. Take this bag of flour. It's got a list of ingredients. Well, that bit's pretty short. It just contains flour. But look at this packet of biscuits and this cake. As well as flour, their list of ingredients go on. In addition to ingredients, there are details about the company that make it and warnings for people who might be allergic to some of the ingredients. Some allergens you might see on packets are eggs, gluten, milk and nuts. It's very important to check if you're cooking for someone who has an allergy. You might have seen similar warnings on menus in restaurants, so people with allergies can choose meals that are safe to eat. Most food packets have a colour-coded system to let you know what's good for you and what isn't so good. The colours used are like traffic lights, but to make it a bit more interesting, think of it a bit like the start of a race. First of all, there's the red. Wait for it. Red means the food contains a high level of sugar, fat or salt. It doesn't mean you can't eat these foods, but you should only eat them occasionally or as a treat. Get ready to roll! Amber means there are medium levels of nutrients. This product is an okay choice and something that's fine to eat, but it's not as good as the green label. So if it's between amber and green, pick green. And what does green mean? That's right, green means go. These are the foods which are good for you. They have low levels of fat, salt and sugar, and the more green lights, the healthier the choice. A supermarket might not be quite as exciting as a racetrack, but this part is my favourite. Can you guess where I am? I'll give you a clue. It smells brilliant. That's right, the bakery. But I'm not buying anything here today. I've got my ingredients here and I'm going to get back to the kitchen to make a very funny looking loaf. Come on. I'm just preparing the dough for a loaf called a plat. That probably gives you a clue as to what it might look like. Yep, it's like a plat you might make with long hair. Three long parts twisted together. Just knocking the dough. And now I'm dividing it up into three parts. So I can have a try at platting. Hmm, it's harder than it looks. Left one over the middle, now the right over the middle. The dough's got extra milk and butter in it to make it very tasty. I'm just a bit worried I'm going to end up with it tied in a knot. George explores the grain chain with support from farmers and millers across the UK. 